There are many wonderful stick fighting systems in the world. Martial arts are like uh, automobile. Some are like Ferrari, Lamborghinis, Porsche, Cadillac, and some are like uh, family station wagons. The system I'd like to share, you, share with you is they call it the dump truck system. Okay. okay. So please bear with me because some of you are trained in a very fairly sophisticated systems. And today you're going to learn a little bit of dump truck system because we are going to hit very hard. This is called a no mercy system. We're going to learn to block. We're going to learn to strike. Okay, let me, I want you to follow with this thing. The use of clubs, sticks, and staff in combat is as old as human history. Every human culture has its own unique way of using the staff and stick for self-defense against wild animals, human attacks, and natural forces. Filipino Kali, Indian Lati, Okinawan Bo, Chinese staff, and others have ele elevated the techniques of stick fighting to the highest level of martial arts. This system that I'll share with you is called DOT. It's not DOT. It's Bando DOT or stick systems. The Bando DOT system is not as refined, elaborate, or sophisticated as the system mentioned above. The DOT system is divided into three major parts. Long staff, medium, and short stick. The Bando combat stick training covers striking and thrusting techniques blocking and parrying techniques, trapping and disarming techniques, holding techniques, head, neck, body, leg, arms and fingers, walking, carrying, lifting, digging, climbing techniques, and yoga stretching and techniques. So today we will try to learn the art of striking and blocking and holding and trapping today. And uh, so some of you heard about the Dog Brothers in California. And the Dog Brothers, as you know, I, he borrowed some of our techniques in the full contact matches when I taught these guys about 12, 13 years ago. So the system I try to share is basically a full contact type of fight. It's like Joe Lewis full contact fighting system. So I want you to be aware of that. Okay, page two. General striking and blocking zone. During a fight, it is extremely difficult to strike at a desired target. <coughs> Let me repeat. During a fight, it is extremely difficult to strike at a desired target. When the opponent is moving, maneuvering for better position for attack and defense. Many of you understand that because all of you are involved with full contact matches. The opponent is in a state of emotional excitement and mental alertness. It's very difficult. When an opponent has high mental alertness, it's very difficult to hit him where you want to hit him. The third is the opponent will resist, defend, and counter attack. Concepts of striking and blocking zones are used in basic training to gain understanding of offensive defensive techniques. So I would like to jump down to strike zones. So you will see the strike zones. The reason for using the strike zones, some systems are very, as I said, very elaborate and very refined. A person will say, some system will say, with my stick, I can shave his mustache. With my stick, I can shave his goatee, you know, whatever. But with us, our system is not as refined, very, very basic. It's a dump truck system technique. So we use like zones like in uh, basketball, like in uh, football, like in hockey. The zone is very critical. So you were dealing with the, I want you to memorize that. This is the target zone. This is the left zone is top of the head in the shoulder line. Okay, zone two, left two, zone three. So when I strike, we will strike with full force. Your, your job is to make sure you learn to protect that zone because the sticks I use are, the sticks back home are about two, two pounds. 
Okay, this is not very light. You cannot flip with this. It's a for for our purpose. The stick we use is basically the. Uh, I would like to show you how I will strike. Okay, I will strike to his zone one, left zone. Okay, and he will try to use this block. So many of you will be standing like that when I strike. I will strike a full blow to the head. Your job is to get up. Okay, so in this line here, right. you see the shot. So he better move. If you do not move, you're going to get cracked. So therefore, it teaches you immediately to move. Okay. So keep this in mind, a non-movement fighting system, usually it's like a statue of liberty. You get liberated very quickly. <laughs> you see? So I see a lot of stick system where they stand in one spot for hours training that. In our training, we will try to say, well, this is the dump truck. If you ride a dump truck, you only know, you only need to know two gears, front and backwards. Okay, there are no side movement. So bear with me. Okay, what we are going to do is that. Uh, so you'll have the right side zone, right side strike zone one, right strike zone two and zone three. The purpose of a zone strike is that when uh, when I was training with uh, the Dog Brothers in California. In many of the matches, last match, I had to attend to several of the injuries. Some of them had the knee cap shattered, hip bone broken, elbows dislocated, shoulders displaced, the skull got cracked, things like that. So one of the reasons is that they use hard Kali sticks without pad. Okay? We are not going to hit that hard. We are not going to be sparring. We just want to develop good drills, okay, so that we will have a, we will have a good uh, skills in reflexes. <clears throat> so it is like working with the pad in the Joe Lewis training. Uh, we have the padding system. Okay, so you will see basically the movement will be very similar. Now I want you to look at on page two again on block zones. So this is the roof block. So we have this roof block. When you please do the roof block. Please keep that hand, this is called a circle of safety. The reason is that you want to protect your face within the circle of your arms. You do not want to block this way because the blow will strike is going to shatter your forehead. We're going to crack a lot of people's head if we don't do that. So, so we block this way, okay, and in that line. The second type of block is, they call it the wall block. These are the roof block to the right side, roof block to the left side. When we block it, please make sure you step out. If you do not step out, your hip bone or your kneecap will be hit because the blow, if you do not step out, stay where you are. What will happen is that as it hits, the hip and the kneecap can be hit. You see, you really have to step out because the blows are hit with a, like a baseball bat. <clears throat> Okay, another one is the wall or side wall blocks. Side wall blocks are basically do this way or this way. This is a side wall block. So that we can we can counter, okay? Because we'll be hitting pretty hard. So please do not put your elbow out and block like that. Your elbow will be broken. So you put that stick in front while we block it. When we block the hip and the kneecap, the blows to the groin. All the blows to the knee had to be blocked like that. A quick block and lock it. So you see here, my elbow serve as a brace against my stomach. You understand? Please do not block this way. You will block your, you will break your wrist. So you will see the movement here. So the hand is there. So you, so you'll be here, you'll be here, you'll be here. You understand? Because we are going to be hitting very hard. So the shock will go through your body. So this is the drills. Like uh, Joe Lewis fighting system, you will find that he will have a jab, cross, hook, dip, and so on. The same little pattern, you will have this basic strike, right strike one, left block one. So you will see the system is state. 
This is right, strike, right, strike one, left, block one. Okay, left, strike one, right, block one, and so on. You can look at that zone and then you can read that. Keep this in mind. The most educated martial art artists in the world are Americans. The Americans are probably the most educated, the most creative, the dynamic. Many of the martial artists in the third world countries are illiterate people. You can't teach them elaborate systems. So many systems that, that are cultivated in this, in this country become enriched. You see? And it goes on among some of the most brilliant martial artists in this country. You'll find that Taekwondo, that's from Korea, that are brought from Korea. Many Americans can outfight and outperform many of the Koreans. The same thing with Okinawan Japanese systems. Many American karate practitioners can outdo many of the Japanese systems. In the same manner with many others. So keep this in mind. Everything that is cultivated in this country will be enriched by the practitioners who are very creative, very dynamic, innovative teachers. Okay? So right now, as I stated to Joe's, I stated that some of the greatest martial artists are not in China or in Japan or Korea. They are in America. And they are Americans. Keep this in mind.